Hi, I'm Kevin Kearns, and welcome to this edition of Shopper Trends. Today I'm joined by Brian Field, Senior Director of Advisory Services. Brian, we're hearing a lot about advanced retail metrics that are going on. Can you explain some of the things that are happening in retail today? Retail for advanced analytics, the focus has been now on sales per shopper, which is the total dollar sales divided by the amount of traffic that's coming into your location. Uh, and that's telling you about the overall performance that's going on within a store. Mm -hmm. And the other would be STAR, which is shopper to associate ratio, which is taking the total traffic and dividing it by the labor hours that are allocated to the store. Let's start with STAR. How should I think about shopper to associate ratio when I'm a retailer? The way you should be thinking about shopper to associate ratio is what is the total service that you want to provide to a customer? So if you think about it, if, if I've got a very high star, uh, I probably don't have a lot of direct engagement with a customer because the, the, the associate is spending a lot of time okay. taking care of a, a whole bunch of customers at the same time. The lower the star, typically the higher level of service that's being provided. What about um, sales per shopper? Sales per shopper really tells the, the, the store and the retailer what's being controlled within their four walls. So in a sense, it's kind of taking away a little bit of the excuses of, of the ebb and flow of traffic, uh, but it's informed by the traffic. So what it's telling you is that for every customer that walks in the store, whether they buy or whether they don't, this is what I can expect in terms of sales revenue that's being generated. How would a retailer, for example, take into account, so they measure sales per shopper and they measure you know, shopper to associate ratio. How do they keep those in context of groups of their stores? Because you know, stores may be different. And how do, you, how do you make sure you keep that in context? Oh, it's, it's a huge deal to be able to understand that. For example, uh, if, if you think about that, that star is representing the, the overall service level in a store and sales per shopper is the ultimate performance of everything that's controlled within that store's four, four walls, if you understand the different types of stores that you have, I like to call it peer grouping your stores, huh. uh, what it does is it, it, it allows you to add context. So if I've got a store that's in, in a huge regional mall with tons of traffic, I can expect it to perform a certain way, whereas if I've got a, a small strip center store that, that is really dealing with a local population, mm -hmm. that performance is going to be uniquely different. I really should not goal them the same way. I should not expect similar results. That's very interesting. So if I have a lot of stores as a retailer, how would I go about peer grouping stores? You mentioned a few ideas, but, but what advice would you give a retailer to do that? Uh, I would be thinking about a, a whole bunch of different characteristics that impact the, uh, the overall results. Okay. I wouldn't necessarily just look at things like what is their current sales per shopper or their historical sales per shopper or their historical conversion or average transaction. I'd be looking at different attributes like uh, what is the socio-demographic of, of the area? What type of a, uh, a, a retail location is it? I mentioned, for example, mall versus a strip center, but, but there are many, many different kinds and, and, and we can certainly help with something like that. Um, the, uh, I'd be looking at geography, but geography shouldn't play the entire role. The purpose of the geography is, is more about particular selling trends within that market uh, and seasonality. Retailers today are trying to get more accountability to their stores. What advice would you give them to create this type of accountability? Yeah, the accountability is, is critical because ultimately you can set any goal that you want to at corporate but that doesn't necessarily mean that the stores are, are going to be able to meet that expectation or even buy into what those goals are. If you're looking at the specific DNA of each individual store as you're setting the goals for the store and what each store is capable of, of, of doing, you're going to get a lot more buy-in from your store teams. They're going to be more excited about the goals that they have. They'll buy into it. They'll have more ownership of the goals. Um, and, and it allows you to set specific expectations that are, are uh, both uh, something they can they can stretch to and, and are also achievable. Thanks, Brian. We appreciate you being here. And thank you for joining us on this edition of Shopper Trends.